You see this? This is rubbish. GarageBand for iOS's built-in visual EQ isn't practical or particularly useful for any but the most basic of EQ tasks. It resembles the visual EQ found in GarageBand for Mac and Logic Pro, albeit with some pretty big downgrades. You only have three EQ points to work with, and they're all bell filters, which mean they boost or cut frequencies and curves around a central point. This really limits your options. If you're mixing things like vocals or guitars, the lack of a low cut filter, for example, which removes all frequencies below a specified frequency cutoff, is going to cause you some issues and result in your mixes sounding dull and muddy. You also can't adjust the Q value of those three EQ points. The Q value determines how wide or narrow the curves around an EQ point are. A higher Q value affects a narrower range of frequencies, and a lower Q value affects a wider range of frequencies. In GarageBand for iOS's stock Visual EQ, the Q value is set really low by default, and there's no way to change it. So you're left working with these huge frequency curves that only allow you to affect your sound in broad strokes, as opposed to you being able to fine-tune problem frequencies. Previously, when aggressively moaning about GarageBand's visual EQ in other videos, I've recommended that you go out and grab a third-party EQ app and bypass GarageBand's built-in option altogether. Well, it turns out that Apple recently added a far better EQ solution right into the GarageBand app, eliminating the need to go and grab anything from anywhere else. I came across this while watching Pete Johns' excellent video on Apple's free iOS plugins. It's a brilliant look at these slightly more advanced stock plugins that now come with GarageBand for iOS. Link is down there below the like button if you want to check it out for yourself. In amongst reverbs, distortions, and dynamic processors is this, the N-Band Equalizer. And it's brilliant. You can add the N-Band Equalizer to a track by selecting the track, tapping the track settings icon, then tapping the plugins and EQ section. From here, tap on edit, then tap on a green plus icon. In the menu that pops up, tap on the Audio Unit Extensions tab, then scroll to the bottom where you'll find all of Apple's homegrown audio units. Find AUN Band EQ, then tap on it to add it to your track. Then just tap on it in the plugin section and its interface will open. You need to tap on one of the eight available color coded EQ bands to activate them. You can tap, hold, and drag on a point to move it around the EQ spectrum, cut or boost specific frequency ranges, and use the two color matched points at the bottom to adjust the width of the band. At the top of the interface, you can tap the wee box next to where it says parametric. This is the type of EQ point set up by default, and select from 11 different EQ band types. Some band types to look out for would be the Butterworth Low Pass, which removes any frequencies higher than where you set the EQ point. And the Butterworth High Pass does the opposite. This one in particular is helpful when it comes to mixing things like guitars and vocals. Bandpass allows you to pinpoint a specific frequency range and cut out everything else. While high shelf and low shelf will boost or cut all frequencies by an amount you set after the EQ point, respectively.
the N-Band Equalizer is a really powerful tool when it comes to mixing your tracks in GarageBand, and it certainly puts that other stock visual EQ to shame. In fact, if you want to see it in action, I use it to help mix some guitar tracks in this video. So give that like button a wee tickle and watch this next. <laughs> 